Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Today is the day of the Lord Jesus Christ is coming soon. Also, you don't know when you're going to die as well. So don't, don't die in your sin, guys. Do not sell your soul to the devil. Sell your soul to Jesus Christ by becoming born again. John 1.12 says that only those who receive the Father and obey His commandments are children of God. So not everyone's a child of God. A lot of people say, oh, we're all children of God. No, we're not. The only people that are children of God are those who keep His commandments. Because the Bible says this is love. That we keep His commandments. That we love Him and love our neighbors. The truth is love, everyone. So we need to start telling our neighbors the truth. Because the truth is what sets people free. Making people feel comfortable in their sin isn't the truth. That's a lie straight from hell. It's time we start telling the truth of the Bible. Because guess what? I used to be a sinner. I used to sin all the time. But I praise God. God bless you today, ma'am. And your family. I used to sin all the time. I used to look forward to sinning. But I became born again when I was 18. I repented. And I put my trust in Jesus Christ. John 1, 12 says that only those who obey the word of the Lord are children of God. You're not a child of God if you're sinning throughout your whole lifetime. 1 John 3, 6 says that those who abide in me do not sin. There's a lot of fake Christians out there today that say, oh, it's okay if you're in your sin. Oh, it's okay if you fall into sin. But first, what 1 John 3, 6 says that those who abide in me do not sin. For those that seen have neither seen me nor known me. Praise God. For those that sin have neither seen me nor known me. You don't know God if you're still sinning, guys. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that we continue in our sin. The Apostle Paul refers to us in the letters in the, in the New Testament that we are righteous and holy by the blood of Jesus Christ. We used to sin. Praise God. We used to sin. We used to do this and that. We used to have sex before marriage. We used to commit adultery, smoke weed, do this and that, get drunk, masturbate, do this and that, put, put sin before God. But I'm here to tell you today that you need to repent of your sin just like how I did when I was 18. If you repent and continue to fall into sin, you never truly repented. Repenting means a changing of mind. You no longer think the way that you used to think. You think that sinning is bad. I hear so many Christians say, oh, I'm born again, but they're living the same lifestyle. They're living the same lifestyle that they're living before they had said they're born again. You're not born again if you're living the same lifestyle that you were before. The Bible says that those who keep my commandments are children of God. Those who receive Jesus Christ are children of God. Those, praise God, God bless you tonight. Those who do the will of the Father are children of God. You're not a child of God if you're doing the will of the devil. You're a child of the devil. And I'm, I'm here to tell you today that I used to be a child of the devil. But guess what? I repented of my sin and I put my trust in Jesus Christ. I'm here to tell you today that God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Do you know what believing in God means? It means a lot more than most people think because John 1, 1 says that God is the Word and the Word was with God. So God is the Word. So if you believe in Jesus Christ, you believe what the Word says. And when you truly believe... God bless you tonight, man. And if you truly believe what God says, then you're going to be led to obey it. Oh, you believe in Jesus Christ? Good for you. The demons and the devil believe in Jesus, but they're obviously not Christian. They're in hell right now, burning, and they're going to be burning forever. Praise God. God bless you tonight. Even if you don't want to hear this tonight, God bless you. Jesus Christ is the King, and I'm pleading with your soul. I care about your soul. I don't want you to go to hell. Jesus Christ talks about hell a lot. It's time you know the God of the Bible, people. It's time you know the God of the Bible. If you decide not to repent, God is going to take joy in destroying you. Deut Deuteronomy says... That just as he enjoyed multiplying you, just as he took pleasure in multiplying you, he's going to take pleasure in destroying the wicked. You keep on choosing to disobey God, then guess what? You're going to have a mighty wrath come upon you, and it's going to come a lot sooner than you think. First, 
1 John 2, 6. Whoever claims to live in me must live as Jesus did. If you claim to be a Christian, you, you must live as Jesus did. Spiritually, you have to spiritually live as Jesus did. We obviously can't all look like Jesus, so it doesn't mean live by Jesus by according to appearance, but spiritually, preach the word. 1 Timothy 4.2 says, preach the word of God in season and out of season. Even when you don't feel like it, preach the word of God. Preach the word of God, preach it, preach it. Don't worry about what pe people think. Don't let other people drag you down to hell. Don't let your boyfriend or girlfriend drag you down to hell with them. It's time you know Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ does love you, but he's also righteous and holy. If you really love your boyfriend or your girlfriend, it's time you start following God. You want to know why the first and greatest commandment is to love God with all your mind, heart, soul, and strength? You want to know why that's the number one and greatest commandment? It's, be it's because when you follow that commandment, you're going to be led to follow the rest of them. Because the word is God. When you, are, when you follow the first and greatest commandment, you're going to be led to love your neighbor. You're going to be led to not lie and steal. You're going to be led to not fornicate and blaspheme. No more using God's name in vain. And by the way, stop claiming that Jesus Christ does this and that when you don't even know him. Stop claiming this and that about Jesus Christ when you don't even know him and you're not even keeping his commandments. It's time you know the God of the Bible, everyone, because guess what? The Bible says that my, pe that my people perish for lack of knowledge. A lot of people are sent to hell because they don't have, they have a lack of knowledge. They, know, they don't know enough about God. They think that, oh, God is just going to forgive me whatever I do. No, trust me, God is not going to accept you for who you are. That's why he says you must be born again. If God just accepted you for who you were, then why would he say that you must be born again? It doesn't make any sense. Amen. It doesn't make any sense. Okay, the homosexuals say, oh, I was born this way. All right, that's why Jesus says you must be born again. You think you were born homosexual? You think that you were born into this and that? That's why Jesus says you must be born again. Just because you're homosexual doesn't mean you have an excuse. You're just as guilty as the rest of us. I used to sin all the time. I'm not better than you. I'm just better off than you because I repented. And I put my trust in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is the king, and the king is coming very soon. And also, you don't know when you're going to die. You could die tonight. You could get in a car wreck. You could get in a heart attack. You could die when you're having sex tonight. You could die when you're eating food. You could get shot, ran over. You don't know what would happen. Your car might explode tonight. So I'm here to tell you today. Repent of your sin because you don't know when you're going to die, but God does. And by the time you die, God is going to say, I gave you enough chances. The Bible says that everyone is going to have a chance to follow God. Paul says everyone's going to have a chance to hear the gospel. No one, there's not going to be any, except, any exceptions when it comes to the day of judgment. There's not going to be any exceptions when it comes to the day of judgment. You either follow God or you didn't. You either repented of your sin... Because guess what? The Bible says that all have fallen short. We've all sinned against God at one point in our life. We've all done it. We've all fallen short. That's why we must be born again. God bless you too. Take care, guys. Praise the Lord. Okay. All right. Praise, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He's alive and well, people. And you want to know why Christianity has turned into... You want to know why Christianity has turned into a joke? Because we got all these wimpy Christians that don't even follow the Word of God. They claim to love God, but they're still sinning. We have... Most Christians are hypocrites, just like the Pharisees. No wonder Christianity has turned, to, turned into a joke. I'm here to tell you today that you can be Christian with your mouth, but you might not be Christian in the heart. If you really love your neighbor, you're going to get out of that comfort zone. Telling people the truth isn't easy. I understand. Sometimes, the hardest conversations to have with people are the most important ones that we need to have. It's not easy to tell your friend to turn away from that sin, but it's necessary. How's it going, sir? God bless you tonight. God bless you. I appreciate everything Amen. you do. What's your name? My name's Roger. Roger, is there anything you want to pray about? No, I just want to tell you I appreciate everything you're doing because I live Glory my life to, to the fullest. And you, I don't, you know, God. you don't know when you're going to be here. 
oh, yeah. today or tomorrow. You don't. And uh, I've, I've actually told my wife, I said, look, you know, that's really how I like to live my life to the fullest. Yeah. I amen. like to do whatever and have fun yeah. and do whatever. But, I, you know, I live for him. Amen. Yeah. I got rebaptized my second time because I didn't know because I got pushed the first time because I did not know. Me too. But, but my second time, I got rebaptized. Amen. And I loved every bit of it. Amen. I, I, yeah, I've been rebaptized too. Praise God, brother. You take, you take care tonight. Good one. You yes, take sir. care. You tell your wife we said hi. I will. My name is Aaron. Uh, his name Hallelujah. is Josiah. So God bless. Brother in Christ. Yes, yeah. Sir. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Take care tonight. Y'all be yes. safe. You Church too. Warm, yeah, we are. Yeah, we're a little bit chilly, but we're doing good. Amen. God is keeping us warm. Amen. Y'all be safe. Okay? We will. We will. We we're do it in and out of season. In and yes, out of season. Keep it up. You, you too. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is powerful, guys. You know why so many Christians don't have power? It's because they don't truly follow God. They claim to love God, but they're, they're hating on Him through the rest of the week. They go to church, they worship and praise a God that they ignore and hate throughout the rest of the week. Yes, when you sin, you're actually hating God. It's His commandments. That's why I'm here to tell you today to... Just read your Bible, guys. Read it even when you don't feel like it. You know, there's times when I don't feel like reading the Word, but I have to be obedient. I have to stay obedient because I love my Father. There's times when I don't want to preach, but I have to stay obedient to His calling. You don't have to be a street preacher like this. There's different ways to share the Word of God. There's different ways to share the Word of God. There's so many different, there's so many different ways. Praise the Lord. You can hand out tracts. You can talk to people one-on-one, -on -one, pray over people, this and that. There's so many different ways. Hallelujah. The Bible says, preach the world, preach the word of God, the good news of Jesus Christ to every creature, everyone, not just who you feel like preaching it to, everyone. Ah, praise the Lord. Don't overthink things. Don't overthink it, guys. God is in control. Don't overthink that situation you're in right now. God is in control if you lean on Him. The Bible says, the Bible says that if you acknowledge God in all your ways, He will direct your path. You will direct your path if you acknowledge Him in all your ways. But if you're sinning throughout the whole week, He's not going to hear your prayers. The Bible says that He does not hear the prayers of people that have iniquity in your heart. No wonder God is answering your prayers. It's because you've been sinning throughout the rest of the week. Why are you asking God for things when you've been disobeying Him this entire time? That's why you have to get that sin out of your life. You have to repent, just like me and my brother did. Praise the Lord. Mark 1.15 says, The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Amen. That's the first thing that Jesus said in the book of Mark. Praise God. God bless you tonight, whoever said that. The first thing that Jesus Christ said in the book of Mark was, The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. It's at hand, guys. And Revelation says that he's coming quickly. Time goes by fast. Time goes by fast. I hear people say, Oh, my kids, look, they've grown up so fast. Oh, look, uh, time went by really fast. Yeah, same goes with God. Uh, there's... The more time that goes by, the more time that goes by, the sooner God is going to come. Guys, it's just simple. It's not that complicated. God bless you tonight, guys. Praise the Lord. Praise God Almighty. Jesus Christ is the King. Buddha is not the King died, guys. He died and he stayed dead and he's burning in hell right now. Muhammad died and he stayed dead and praise the Lord, he's burning in hell right now. Allah died and he stayed dead and he's burning in hell right now. But guess what? I'm here to tell you today that Jesus Christ died and he rose again. Hallelujah. Praise the King. Jesus Christ is alive and well. And guess what? The free gift of God, the free gift of God doesn't cost you any money. I just said it's free. The free gift of God is the Holy Spirit. Once you truly repent and put your trust in him, Guys, everyone knows the verse John 3, 16, but it's time you start obeying it. Just because you can quote that verse doesn't mean you actually believe in God. It's time you actually obey John 3:16. Because guess what? Everyone knows John 3:16, but what about Revelation 3:16? Everyone knows the verse John 3:16, 16, 
But what about Revelation 3.16? It says, what is, if you're lukewarm, he's going to spit you out. Because you're neither hot nor cold, he is going to spit you out. Because you leave a bad taste in his mouth. He doesn't like people that are back and forth. You can't be back and forth with God. There is no in-between. You're either for God or all against him. Revelation 3.16. God bless you today. Hallelujah. Revelation 3.16. But because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. You leave a bad taste in Jesus Christ's mouth? That doesn't sound good to me. It doesn't sound like you're going to be entering heaven if that happens to you, to me. Guys, the Bible says to fear not man. Don't fear man. Man can't send you to hell. Man can kill the body, but not the soul. But the Bible says to fear the one who can kill body and soul. Praise the Lord. God bless you tonight, ma'am, and your family. The, the Bible says... Fear God who can kill body and soul. Jesus Christ can kill your body and also send your soul to hell. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ can kill your fleshly body and also send your, your soul to hell. That's why we have to fear God and, and keep his commandments. Deuteronomy says that this is a man's all. Deuteronomy says that this is a man's all, that we fear God and keep his commandments. That's all you have to do. It's not that complicated. Once you truly do that, you're going to be led to read the Bible. You're going to be led to follow God. The devil's going to make it seem all complicated. Oh, you have to do this and that. But I'm here to tell you today, I'm here to tell you today that the path to life is narrow and it's simple, guys. It's not open-minded. You do what the Bible says. I'm here to tell you today that the path to death and destruction is broad. Most people go to hell. Most people do not inherit the kingdom of God. That's just what Jesus says. I love what God says. That's why I'm repeating it. Praise the Lord. How's it going today, sir? God bless you. God bless you today. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. God bless you today, sir. And everyone else who is here today, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, that you repent tonight if you haven't already, because guess what? You don't know when you're going to die, and you don't know when Jesus Christ is going to come back. You, you got two things coming against you. You don't know when you're going to die, and you also don't know when Jesus Christ is going to come back. And I'm here to tell you today that you don't want to be left behind in the rapture. While you have a chance, while you have a chance to be a part of the rapture, it's time you get born again today. Because once the rapture happens, it's going to get a whole lot more difficult. But even then, even then, it's going to be worth it. I'm here to tell you today that if the rapture happens, and you remember me saying this, follow God still no matter how hard it gets. Because guess what? It's going to be worth it. You're not going to have to burn in hell for eternity. No matter how, it gets, how hard it gets in this life, it's worth it. It's way better than burning in hell for eternity where all the sinners are going to go that didn't repent and all the demons and the devil's going to go. Don't get it wrong, guys. I used to be a sinner too. But I repented. I became born again. I'm no longer that person. I no longer look forward to sinning. I no longer strive to sin. I no, I no longer try and find pleasure in sinning. I follow God's word. I might get tempted. But praise the Lord, 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says that God gives the power for people to turn away from temptation. So next time you're tempted to masturbate, next time you're tempted to watch that pornography, oh yes, oh yes, guys. <laughs> I know, it's funny. Next time you're tempted to have homo sex, realize that God provides a way out of, God bless you guys tonight realize that God provides a way out of that temptation no matter what it is lying stealing murder God will pro provide a way if you seek him it's not easy if it, if it was easy if it was easy then there wouldn't be so many people going to hell the Bible says that those who endure till the end shall be saved so just because you got baptized when you're six years old and said that cute little prayer oh God is my Savior but then you continue to sin against him doesn't mean you're saved it's a continuation it says those who endure till the end shall be saved. And the Bible talks about a great falling away. 
How can you fall away from something that you were never in? You realize if you don't sin, you die for nothing, right? No. God did not die so that you could keep on sinning. You have that mindset you're going to be sent to hell soon. It's time you repent. Jesus Christ, Amen. praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm not here to tickle your ears, everyone. I'm here to give you the truth. I'm not here to make you feel good like Joel Osteen. Yep. It's time you know the God of the Bible. It's about time you know the God of the Bible. Amen. Instead of listening, listening to Kenneth Copeland and Joel Osteen, it's time you open up the Bible and read for what it says. Don't, don't cherry pick it. Just because you know John 3.16 and, and Matt, in the first two words of Matthew 7.1, which is don't judge, doesn't mean you're Christian. It means you're lukewarm. Just because, this is, <laughs> this is funny to me. Just, <laughs> the only two things that lukewarm Christians know is John 3.16 and the first two words of Matthew 7.1, which is don't judge. They can't even read the full verse. Christians, all they know is the first two le uh, the first two words of John of Matthew seven one. Pardon me, which is don't judge. But they don't even read the full verse. It says, "Do not judge out of fear; you yourself be judged." So don't judge hypocritically. Don't judge people when you're in sin yourself. The Bible says, "Don't judge until you've removed the log out of your own eye." I've already done that. That's why I'm here judging you. And it's time you read the book of Judges. It's about God sending people down to judge. And guess what? Those people are servants of God. They're not judging sinfully. They're judging righteously. It's John 7, 24 says, Don't judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. We are here if you need prayer for anything. Spiritually, physically, no matter what it is, if you believe in Jesus Christ, he will fix it one way or another. It might not be in the way that you want, but guess what? God's answer is always best. God knows more than us. So instead, guys, God knows more than us. Why are you listening to man when God gave you his book, which has all the answers to it? Why are you relying so much on your girlfriend to give you answers and love putting her before God? When the Bible is so just, it's just right there, guys. It's just, it, it blows my mind how stupid people can be. The Bible says that those who believe there's no gods are fools in the heart. They're also fools in the mind. They can't think very well. Those who are fools, those who do not believe there is a God, they are fools in the heart. I'm here to tell you today that it's pretty obvious that there's a God. Just look around. If a human eye can make, not make itself, well, if a building cannot make itself, then how could the human eye make itself? A human eye is far more complex than any man-made building. Do you really think that roller coaster over there built itself? You think it just came, to bat, came together by two rocks banging together? No, it came by a man hammering down pieces of metal. It didn't come, it didn't come from monkeys and two rocks. And also, I'm here to tell you today that I've been looking at the monkeys in the zoo and they still look the same. When are the monkeys in the zoo going to turn human? When are the... T it's silly, guys. There obviously is a God. There is a God. It's obvious. It's obvious, everyone. And guess what? The God of the Bible is a God of war. Revelation. Praise God. Uh, what is it? I think it's Revelation 19.11. Don't worry, I can look it up if you come over here being the hypocrite. Uh, Revelation... Dang. 11.19 says that he judges and makes war. God, Jesus Christ judges and makes war. No wonder you don't like what I'm saying. It's because there's spiritual warfare going on, guys. There's spiritual warfare going on. He's making war right now between you and me. Because guess what? I have the Holy Spirit and you have the spirit of the Antichrist. Jesus Christ judges and makes war. Hallelujah. Let me go to that chapter real quick. I'm going to praise the Lord. About to give it to my, about to give my mic to my brother. Praise the Lord. Let's read this verse real quick. Okay. I think. Praise God. Hallelujah. I pray today that you are following God. All right, praise God. 1911, I was right. Hallelujah. 
All right, guys, open up your Bibles, get out your phones, write it down if you want to. This is a great verse. Revelation 19.11. Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on it was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. Oh, yeah. You, you like to say, oh, don't judge, don't do this and that. But guess what? I'm here to tell you today that God is going to judge you, and if you stayed in your sin, you're not going to be sent to heaven. You're going to be sent to hell. I don't want you to be sent to hell. That's why I came here today to fill you up with knowledge, the knowledge of God, not the knowledge of man. This isn't my understanding. Guys, I read this in the Bible, and I came to tell you what I read in the Bible. Hallelujah. Praise God. His word is sharper than a double-edged sword. You think that machine gun is powerful. Well, the Bible has the power to send you to heaven and hell. You think that bomb is powerful that we dropped on in Japan in World War II. But, yeah. What, say it. Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Yeah, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. You think that that bomb was powerful, but I'm here to tell you today that the Word of God is way more powerful. It has the power to send you guys to heaven and hell, depending on whether you obey. God bless you guys tonight. Uh, he has the power, because uh, John 1, 1 says that he is the word. I'm not talking about the physical book, guys. Praise God. The Bible is just there. It's just there. It's the truth. It's in a book so that we can read it. Doesn't matter if you burn your Bible, the truth is just going to be there. It's going to be there forever. Because guess what? It was in the beginning and the end. Hallelujah. Here you go, Josiah. Uh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, everybody. Hey, guys. Today I'm speaking. Guys, we ain't here uh, for the fun of it. We ain't here for the, as you would say, heck of it. Guys, we need to watch our language, watch our tongue, as it says in Hebrews. Yes. Guys, it's hard to break it to you, but you guys won't understand the love of God without the wrath of God. Amen. And without the wrath of God, you won't understand the love and grace that he has, that he stored upon you. So guys, we're here today to tell you that the wrath of God is serious. You need to fear him. He's a builder. He built this earth. He built it with his word. He didn't build it with a snap of a finger. He built it with his word. See, these builders built it by hand. They built this carousel by hand. They built these buildings by hand. But God built something by word. Hallelujah. God is the word. Why don't you just go up and pick up the Bible because it is God's Word. We ain't here to tickle your ears, guys. We're here to tell you the truth. As Christians, as reborn Christians, we are here to tell you the truth. The Gospel is a mirror. It reflects your lifestyle. If you are continue smoking, it's going to say, stop that, because you're harming your temper. You're harming your soul. You're going to die. We're here for people like you, because we love you. And nothing else but God loves you. You may raise your hand and cheer that God loves you. And then you may go tonight and have sex with somebody you're not even married to. And that's going to be a sin that you're going to have to repent for before God. Oh. Every, knee, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. The Bible is true. The Bible is definitely true, and I don't know how you guys don't understand. Hallelujah. It's hard to speak about his love without the wrath. He's going to come here and judge you. He's going to judge upon you. He's going to come here on a cloud of white falling from heaven.